Hi, my name is Hazuki. I'm an inline figure skater and a figure skater. And today I bring you exercises you can do when it's a rainy day or you don't have that much space. Now, admittedly, it is sunny today, which is why you can't see my eyes, because the glare. Yup. Now, if you skate outdoors or you live somewhere where there isn't much space to skate you're gonna have days where you can't go to a tennis court or a parking lot to go skating and so this is for those days when you want to skate but you can't this can work on sidewalk or inside your bedroom or on a porch maybe anywhere where you have a hard surface but the space that you have is pretty small the first thing you're going to want to do is clear it so anything you can get rid of you want to move lamps yoga mats your bed push it off to the side as much as you can things like that another thing to keep in mind if you have technology near you try to move it but if you can't just be really mindful <laughs> you don't want to break your computer because you decided to skate indoors uh, legal disclaimer I am NOT liable for anything you do accidentally while doing some of these exercises I don't suggest you do this in your bedroom I suggest you do this on the sidewalk or outside or at least somewhere that doesn't have sharp knives hanging off the walls and expensive computers. Another thing that might be smart, keep like a water bottle or a drink near you just so you can rehydrate. Uh, Cause you don't wanna go up and down your stairs or along hallways and crap on your inlines. I know from experience. Step two, you're gonna wanna put on your skates. Step two and a half, disregard your own advice about socks. I forgot to mention that this is for anyone who is beginner or intermediate. If you're advanced, these aren't gonna help you is my guess. Um, just because it's not, yeah, that's close enough to being properly tied. Please also disregard the fact that I'm not tying my skates very well. I'm tired and I'm lazy. Step 2.75, realize you probably should have worn long pants instead of shorts. Great, now you're on skates. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is get a little bit used to the slippery surface because indoor is very different from outdoor. That's not a surprise to anyone. Don't trip on your bed sheets. That's, yeah, don't do that. I am not encouraging you to accidentally hurt yourself by doing this. I'm just, you should do this on a sidewalk, not in your bedroom to be fair, but I don't have a sidewalk. So I'm filming it in my room. Fun fact, I actually learned how to do most of my skating indoors in this very room. There's a lot of dents on the floor and walls from me hitting it. Cool. Step 3.5, uh, or two, I don't remember what number I'm on. Check your monitor um, to see what your notes are. So we are gonna start with spin exercises. This can be from when you don't know how to do spins at all, up until about learning how to do your back spin. If you're more of a beginner, some of these might be a little bit harder to do, or you might not be able to do them. And if you're more advanced, some of these might be a little boring for you. Uh, just kind of gauge where you're at and figure it out for yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm great at this. The first exercise is to do a two foot spin. I cover this in my how to spin video, but that video is really bad. So I'm gonna show you again really quickly. If you spin counterclockwise, what you're gonna wanna do is to left, right, is to pop your, <laughs> is to pop your right heel and put your weight over your left toe. Try that a couple times to get used to the feeling. Next, you're gonna wanna do a quarter turn, then a half turn, and then a full turn. After that, you can advance doing more and more rotations as you would when you're starting to learn how to do one foot and two foot spins. Next, you can do a one foot spin with a pivot entrance. Now in my how to spin video, I demonstrated this wrong because I'm an idiot. So what you're actually supposed to do is you wanna pump. Don't get stuck on your covers, jeez. What you're gonna wanna do is pump and spin and stop on two feet, bend your knees. You don't wanna do like a normal figure skating exit because you'll hit something. If you're having a little bit of trouble switching from two foot to one foot, one of the things you can try is to grab a chair and put your weight over your toe as if you were about to do a spin and just hold it. Just kind of feel where your weight is. I don't know why, but this really helped me um, and maybe it might help you, especially if you're kind of stuck a little bit, that might help move things along a little bit, if that makes any sense whatsoever. Next is back spins. More so than forward spins, 
you really want to make sure that you're very mindful of the stuff around you. Again, preferably this would be like on a sidewalk rather than indoors near expensive things or not so expensive things, but things that have a lot of sentimental value. But here we are. Just like when you put your weight over your toe on the left foot, you're gonna wanna put your weight over the wheel and onto your toe where it would be if you were spinning in a backspin, if that makes any sense. And kind of feel where along your foot that is. Maybe try to balance if you want to, but I mean, it's really hard. So be careful if you do. Um, you could also try a very small backspin again be super careful. Obviously, you're not gonna wanna go for like a huge entrance like you would in a normal backspin. Uh, pivot is probably the one you want to go to. And you're not gonna wanna bring your leg in all the way because that means you're gonna have to check out and you're gonna run into things. Another thing you can try doing, uh, I personally have a lot of issue with sit spins. <laughs> and especially on inlines, I have issues with sit spins and where to put my weight over my toe just because it's really weird having like your foot out in front of you and trying to balance on the toe if that makes any sense so something you can try is to grab a chair or something that you can hold on to and just hold the sit spin position with your inlines asterisk without spinning likewise with a camel you can grab a chair i wouldn't recommend a spinny chair but that's all i got right now <laughs> and if you have the space behind you you can try for holding a camel spin position one of the things that kind of helps me while I'm trying to hold these positions for spins is to do my best not to actually have any weight over the toe stop. One of the biggest mistakes you can make while you're spinning is to just put like a bunch of weight on your toe stop so that you're dragging it along the ground and you like don't have a toe stop by the end of the practice. Um, and this kind of helps me at least counteract that a little bit and make sure that I can like put as much of my weight as possible over my wheel rather than my toe. Next is edges. Next are edges, because that is a plural. The first edge exercise I have for you guys is for three turns. This is also in my three turns video. I feel like I'm just kind of reusing a bunch of old content now. <laughs> but it is to practice where your weight will be and how you would flip your weight while you do three turns while holding a chair. Doing really small three turns while holding onto a wall or a chair or... Yeah, a wall or a chair. <laughs> Can really help with confidence when you want to start learning how to do three turns. This also works for back three turns. I know a lot of people, including myself, have a lot of trouble with back three turns because you're putting your weight over your heel instead of your toe and that's really scary. <laughs> um, and this can kind of help a little bit with the confidence of that and just kind of feeling like you are able to do it. One of the things I really like to do, especially as like a cool down after skating, is to hold spiral stretches and spiral positions without moving. So you really shouldn't do this with technology around. So you're gonna want like a chair or a wall or maybe not a corner because I feel like that's a little bit dangerous for this. <laughs> Generally, if you don't want to slip, you're gonna want to like have a little bit of weight over the toe and use the toe stop to stop you from moving. That's not a great habit to have for spirals because like you would toe pick the ground while you're doing a spiral then. But it is kind of the only way of not moving while you're holding these stretches. I like doing this against like a big couch or something so that I, I have a thing to stop me from moving forward so I don't have my weight over my toe but I don't, this is not a couch and I will, yeah, this is not a couch, so I can't really do that. So I'm gonna have to put my weight over my toe. And repeat on the other side. I don't wanna do that, so I'm not gonna. This is also good for when you're starting to do a new type of spiral and you're not totally confident that you can do it on inlines. So personally, my back Y spiral is one of my favorite spirals on ice, but I'm terrified of doing it on skates because I don't like doing back spirals on skates, let alone one where I can fail fairly easily. And for me at least, it's pretty helpful to be able to hold these positions in inlines without the fear of falling and hurting myself. Another thing I used to do a fair bit in my bedroom was jump walkthroughs. Obviously, you can't actually do these jumps, especially in such a small space, but doing the walkthroughs is a reasonable exercise to do in small spaces. Now some more than others are harder to do. For example, a sal, you, it's nice to have the back leg to help you kind of move through the three turns, but something like a toe loop is easy to do in a small space and keep it controlled. Now obviously you also cannot extend your leg back the way you should be able to. Um, don't kick your wall. I've done it before. It leaves dents. It's not a good idea. Don't bend your knees all the way, again for obvious reasons. practice 
is your Lutz Edge. I hate Lutz. I hate Lutz with a passion. This makes me feel like I'm actually practicing it without practicing it. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain how to do a jump just because I know I'll probably explain it wrong. There's a lot of great resources on YouTube on how to do jumps. Uh, go to them, not me. Practicing Lutz Edge. I already forget how to do a Lutz Edge. The advantages you get from these kinds of exercises is mostly just the confidence you get from practicing things without A, people looking at you. Because <laughs> honest, let's be honest, it's terrifying to try something new when people are watching you. This is why I don't like practicing things at ice rinks. Because um, I don't like people watching me. <laughs> it really stresses me out. These are great confidence boosters for when you are just starting out learning something or when you're iffy on how to do something. Or if it's raining outside, which it's not today, so I really should just go outside and skate like a normal person. Oh, the last thing. I learned how to do my eagles. Before I learned them on ice, I actually learned them on inlines, and I learned them in my bedroom. Can't particularly say that I recommend learning how to do eagle like fully inside a small bedroom. There's marks on the walls from my wrist guards that I accidentally hit against them and we are not going to tell my parents that that is a thing that exists in this bedroom but the way I learned how to do it is I would I'm going to move this chair I would hold on to a wall uh, preferably like a corner and I would just I would A practice like the, the leg for an eagle and then I would like slowly inch myself along the wall and that's how I learned how to get comfortable with being in like the eagle position and then I'd slowly back away from the wall and then I would fall inevitably. <laughs> and from that, you can also do just back wheel pumps, which are really fun. They're not helpful in any way, maybe as like an inner thigh workout, <laughs> but they're fun. And honestly, why do we do this if not for the fun of it? To be honest, when you're not in a big space for skating, you can't skate like a normal person, <laughs> but they have helped me gain a little bit of confidence, especially when I was just starting out in this bedroom. Uh, trying to figure out how to inline skate without looking like an idiot um, and I hope they help you too or at the very least entertain you a little bit for like five minutes until you get bored of them According to YouTube statistics, not very many of you are subscribed. I actually I think it's like 75 25 But if you like my content, please consider subscribing. It's free. You can always change your mind and it helps me out a lot